people think I'm damaged goods. I'm worried about losing my job. Will I ever get a transplant? I want to see my children graduate from college. How can I afford this? I don't want to be a burden. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed with information. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever fall in love and get married. I just want to play with my friends. You're listening to Kidney Talk, streaming health, happiness, and hope to the renal community with your hosts, Lori Hartwell and Stephen First. Wow. Welcome to Kidney Talk again. We're back, Lori. We made it. We yes. made it to another week. Uh, we did. How was your week, Stephen? It was great. It's so, it's, can you believe this weather we're having here in Southern I, California? I can't believe it. It's absolutely beautiful. Wonderful. One, so for those of you in the other parts of the country and the world that are not having this beautiful weather, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Well, I had an exciting thing happen this week. Uh, you know, the Patients Educating Patients and Professionals Program, the PET program, a that lot of people are right interested after in it. people's court, right? <laughs> No, it's a renal support oh, network that's right. program. That's right. That's right. Yes. It's to add a little pep to the renal community. Um, it's 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 doing great, and uh, we're so excited that so many people are embracing the patient speakers out there in the country. You know, I heard one of the speakers, and they are absolutely fantastic. Aren't they wonderful? Inspirational. I know. And, and just wonderful. And they've been there. What's great about the pep program is these are people who are not just lecturing you. These are people who are actually been there, done that. Exactly. They've been on dialysis. They've had transplants, and it's just absolutely Have incredible. Wonderful. Story. Now, so, you know, how do they uh, book one of those speakers? They just call uh, Renal Support Network. Um, come to our website. You can see the different presentations we offer. Give us a call, and we would love to try to help out your uh, future patient meeting or professional meeting. You know what I was thinking of doing? I was thinking of having the other patients, you know, and we'd line up our chairs and, and do like a, a chair race on dialysis. Well, you know, I have an interesting story about that. Um, uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Ed Masry who was, um, you know, the, the I movie know Ed Aaron Brock, the, yes. the movie, you know, unfortunately he passed lived in away. My neighborhood. Aaron Brockovich, he was the, the lawyer. Um, actually, he was running for city council. And his opponent came out and said, uh, you know, Ed Masry's unfit to run for city council um, because he's on dialysis. And Ed Masry called a press release, uh, excuse me, called a press conference and said, you know, I will uh, challenge my opponent to a race down the boulevard and I'll drag my dialysis machine and I'll still beat him. And he did. He didn't actually drag his dialysis machine down the boulevard, but he did beat him in the election. And so isn't it amazing? I mean, I always uh, commend Ed Masry because he had so many different illnesses, yeah. um, but he was such a fighter. And, you know what? Uh, now, that gives me a thought. I'm on dialysis. I could challenge my next door neighbor to a hot dog eating contest. But you know what? <laughs> Speaking of hot disgusting. dogs. Hey, how do you like this segue? Hot dogs. Hot do- get that it? was a hot stretch. Dog. What are we talking about today, Lori? We are going to be talking about the four the love of pets. I love pets. Pets are my, I watch Animal Planet 24 hours a day. Yeah, and one thing's for sure, pets provide us with a companionship and unconditional love. But did you know that pets can actually improve our mental and physical health? Well, they improve my physical health. I don't know about mental health because I'm still pretty crazy. <laughs> well, that's that's true. No, but, but it, you know, it really, it's, it's true. You're, you're right. It's been shown that, you know, pets can actually lower our blood pressure and cholesterol. So after you have the hot dog eating contest, you pet your dog, (laughs) everything's fine. You know, they also, you know, reduce the need for pain medication. I Mm. mean, it's been proven. Yeah, so if you have a really bad migraine headache, you kiss the pooch. (laughs) <laughs> Everything's and better. I know for myself, I just watch my pets play and it just, you know, it reduces stress and anxiety. And I think that it's, you know, it's a wonderful way to be able to just relax. And it increases social interaction. You know, sometimes you don't feel like talking to people and you you come home and you and you talk to your dog. You know, you can have a miserable exactly. day. You open the door and that dog's always coming to you, exactly. you know, wagging its tail and everything. Unless you have a pit bull and it's going to bite your ass. Exactly. Well, you know, I have two dogs, a cat and a parrot, Chloe, Max, Johnny, and Sophie. And a partridge and, and a pear tree. Exactly. And, um... I tell my pets all kinds of secrets. Do you tell your pets secrets? Um, <laughs> do I tell my pets I mean, secrets? No. You know, what they see can probably, you know, get me in a lot of trouble. Well, you know, because, I just hope they can't talk. because uh, 
Well, that's one of the things that's great about an animal is that they don't talk, and so they don't give you feedback, so you tell yeah, them a lot of things. Yeah, but that's not true. That's just not true. You I've think... been over your house, Lori. Oh, yes. I forget. I have a parrot who has about a 300-word vocabulary. So does actually... not <laughs> shut up. I have never seen a parrot talk as much as this parrot. I know. He does. He, he is an exception to the rule. So actually, you can talk to the animals. Right. And you know what else, which I find amazing? Globally, they will increase your life expectancy. Yes. You know, my parrot actually will live to be 60 years old. So I have I have Johnny willed. I mean, I had to write a will for my parrot because some of the parrots live to be 100 years. So on today's show, we're going to be speaking with a specialist in animal-assisted therapy. And this helps bring the joy and health to people with chronic illnesses. If we could talk to the animals and learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. I'd study elephant and eagle, and buffalo and beagle, alligator, guinea pig, and flea. I would converse in polar bear and python. I would curse in fluent kangaroo. If people ask me, can you speak rhinoceros? I'd say, of course, can't you? Oh, I just love pretzels. Let's, let me see here. One serving is six pretzels? What, are they kidding me? Who only ate six pretzels? I have to stay on my renal diet. I know. I can bite part of one pretzel. Then bite the side of another pretzel. And then I hook them together, and I can count that as one pretzel. Mmm. Boy, that was good. You know what I love now? A big gulp. Now if I fill it up halfway and then drink it and refill it to the top, now that won't count towards my daily fluid intake. Or will it? Make the connection. Eating high-sodium foods makes you thirsty, which will make you retain more fluids. Do you want to share a tip on how to stay within your fluid limit? Email us at kidneytalk at rsnhope.org, and we'll let our listeners in on your different tips. Ew, I conferred with our fellow friends, man the animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals and talk with the animals, grunt, squeak, and squawk with the animals, and Lord, they could talk to me. And here we are with Deb Hurdle, pet. Therap- now, do you give psychology to the pets? Or? <laughs> no, I think my dog needs therapy sometimes, but no, <laughs> he gives therapy to people. So t- tell us, what is what is a therapy dog? Tell us what it is. It's not like a seeing eye dog or anything no, like that. No, it's not. It's, it's just a pet that loves to be loved. Uh, therapy pets have been around for a long time. People used to take them to convalescent homes, special education classes at schools, um, senior centers, and now they're in the acute care hospital system. And they're finding out there's wonderful benefits for patients that can relate directly to their blood pressure, you know, their heart rate, um, their their mood, their ability to heal. So when, uh, when the dog comes around, mm-hmm. the, the blood pressure gets better? And yes, the, it does. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. That's amazing. Well, when well I was, hosp- hospitals are stressful places, you know. It, it is, well, when I was in the hospital um, a little over a year and a half ago, I had double knee replacements. Mm-hmm. And it was so frustrating. But this pet therapy dog would come around every day, and I would see the dog. And that was the best part of the day for me. I um, know. People look forward to it when they know it's coming. When they don't know it's coming and they're lying in their bed and they're, you know, they're discouraged or they're feeling disconnected from their families and their life, in walks a dog and they they just light up, you know. Some patients that are unresponsive, you know, very dejected, Mm -hmm. uh, it just does wonders for them. Well, and pets aren't judgmental. They don't. They don't no. see scars. They don't see no. bandages or anything. They don't. We're all equal in their eyes. Now, who's this little guy we have with us today? We have Rocky. He's my therapy pet. He is a Pomeranian, six and a half years old. A Pomeranian. You know, I was trying to guess the breed, yeah. Pomeranian. Mm-hmm. I was thinking Saint Bernard. Yeah, right. He looks. <laughs> you could mistake him for that, right? <laughs> He's a little fluff ball, isn't he? Yes, he is, and he loves people. He's a rescue dog. I got him from the pound when he was 14 months old, 
And um, he's been in a, uh, doggy agility where they go through the obstacle courses, you know. And uh, he's taking acting lessons. And he's an active he's little guy. He's taking acting lessons? Yes, How do you is. give a dog acting lessons? Uh, you teach them commands. You break down the roles. You know, it's storyboarding, basically. And you teach them what they need for um, different behaviors. And uh, Is they... it Stanislavski or is it, uh, <laughs> you know, he just... Yeah, method acting. Method acting. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you can't do is be a dog. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's trying to be a cat. I know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people that <laughs> that don't particularly care for dogs, if they're cat people or ferret people or bird people, when they a see, ferret person. Yeah, there's ferret people around there. Oh my god. Parrot, ferrets are nice pets. They're they're hard to take care of. I understand, but they're they're quite cute. But you can't have a ferret in the hospital because there are too many, <laughs> too many drawbacks, uh, infection control wise. But uh, a dog is a very healthy animal. It uh, we keep our dogs very clean. We're very very careful with the infection control standards. Um, there's not much you can catch from a dog. So right. they don't worry safe. about the dog being in like. A sterile environment like a hospital, then? No, and a hospital is actually not a sterile environment. It's a very dirty environment, you know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I Who know. Have thought, I you know. know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's very little uh, you could catch from a dog, and a dog can't catch anything from a human or very few things Except from the human. bone that you throw. They catch right. it all yes, the time. Yes, they catch the right. bone. Or the bone yes. But people with all kinds of pets respond to any kind of pet that comes in the door, and there's more than therapy dogs around. There's therapy llamas. Llamas, yes. really? Yeah, I'll try to get that yeah. in the hospital elevator. I know. Well, I don't know that you could do that in the acute care hospital. What, how, but <laughs> is a pet therapy llama, uh, does the person go to the llama or does the llama no, come to the, the person? the llama comes to them. It's us- usually in a convalescent setting. I'm trying to um, picture that. Mm-hmm. Very wow. tall, walking through doors, bows down to the patient at the bedside. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now, now, how do you uh, choose? Is there a particular breed that you choose? Like you wouldn't choose a pet therapy pit bull, right? You know, we had a pit bull is... Pit bulls are maligned, and it's the way you train them, you know, and they've been used for other things besides just friendly things. But... Um, we had a Rhodesian Ridgeback, which is a fearsome-looking I dog. I love Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, they're wonderful, but they're very scary-looking. Yes. We had one in our program. It was a doctor's wife. She was one of the original people in the program that started it. And she would—this was a male Rhodesian Ridgeback, very sweet. She put a pink collar on it so it looked more approachable. And um, it was the most wonderful dog you can imagine. We don't limit breeds, mm-hmm. per se. It's a temperament thing. And um, a personality thing. Well, one of the things I think about pet therapy that may be interesting is that if I don't have a pet, if I don't have room for a pet, is there a way to be involved to to get involved to be a pet therapist? Is there other pets that I can work with? Is is that a possibility, or or do you have to have your own pets to be a pet therapist? You have to have your own pet because you and the pet are trained. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, so you're trained as well as the pet? Yes, we're trained. Oh, we are the I see. we're the certified handler of the pet, and we don't hand our pet off to other people. We accompany our pet at all times. But pets are used for, say, in a physical therapy environment. Um, the dog will uh, you can throw a ball or have a patient throw a ball when a patient's working with motor skills, you know, or if they're working with uh, vocal skills, trying to say say things, you know get the ball, bring the ball, and the dog can respond. You know, you can have right. patient. You have, that, you have that communication and you have yep. that mm-hmm. rapport. So it would be hard mm-hmm. to pass off your pet to somebody else. Can you imagine? Imagine, I don't think anybody can handle my dogs. They're pretty, uh, <laughs> they, they need therapy. <laughs> you know, I'm amazed at, you know, what some therapy dogs can do. Um, mm-hmm. The other night on television, I was watching the news and this man who was a diabetic uh, went into a, a insulin shock mm-hmm. and fell down. And his dog was trained. It's a beagle. Yes. His dog was trained to smell his breath yes. and to see if he was having an insulin reaction. Mm-hmm. And when the dog smelled that he was indeed having an insulin reaction, mm-hmm. the dog went over to the phone and dialed 911. Yes, the dog I saw that. that. The Isn't dog, that fabulous? Yes, it was on the news. Does it, was it like, did he actually dial 911 no, or did he have a, a push button? It was, it was a, a push, push button, button that oh, okay. automatically dialed mm-hmm. 911, but he knew which button to push. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I thought that was great. That's pretty yeah. amazing. You, know. you can train dogs to do a lot of things, but a, a dog that just isn't particularly skilled can still be very loving and can just go into a hospital setting and meet people and greet people and... 
I mean, your endorphin level comes up when you look at a dog wagging its tail, and it just They're smiles just so happy. at you. They have yeah. that Absolutely. endless but smile. You know, it's not true. You can't teach a dog everything because I tried to teach my dog how to make restaurant reservations, yeah, and he couldn't do work. that. Yeah. <laughs> I told him to dial the 1-800 yeah. number and ask yeah. for a table for four, and he just couldn't do he it. He couldn't do yeah. it. Mine was busy. He can only know order how to a Starbucks. <laughs> only a Starbucks. His name is Starbucks. <laughs> so, no, but it, it's great. I know because I know, you know, I, I'll come home, and I've had a tough day and everything. Mm-hmm. And my dog, as soon as I open the door, runs to me, and Mm -hmm. he's so happy to see me, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he wants food, but, you know, (laughs) (laughs) as besides the point. They depend on us, but they depend on us for love, too. And that's what a dog gets in return when it's seeing all these people in, in, you know, medical settings. Right. In a dialysis setting, in fact, I was going to tell you, Stephen, that uh, my husband's nephrologist okayed for me to go into his brand new facility, his dialysis facility that he just opened in our town. Oh, oh wow. Really? Yes. Is this in Thousand Oaks, California? It's in, it's in Camarillo. Oh, Camarillo, Yes, California. right across from the Pleasant Valley St. John's Hospital. Wow, so. that's great. You know, we used yeah. to have a dog, uh, he was a poodle, uh, I believe, come in with a patient mm-hmm. uh, to uh, the unit I go to, mm-hmm. and they recently told them, because some of the other patients complained, yes. that they didn't want the dog there anymore. Yes. And, and his name is Oscar, and I just remember him, and he was mm-hmm. just such a cute dog, and he was just, he never left left his uh, owner's side. Mm-hmm. He was just, you could call him and everything. Mm-hmm. He'd look at you, but he would never leave the right. patient. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. You know? Wow, it probably was so beneficial for that patient to have that dog with him, too. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk more about dogs and cats and maybe even birds, because Lori has a bird and that's an amazing <laughs> bird. We're going to talk a lot more about that kind of stuff, too. Okay. So, uh, we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Jenny Huey. There is a critical shortage of organs. 91,000 people are waiting for a transplant. I am one of those people waiting for a kidney like many of you listening. I wait for my transplant coordinator to call me with the good news, that they have a kidney for me. Other young women my age are waiting for that special someone who they met online at that dating website, Match.com, to call. And I'm waiting for the right cross match. It is important that we all inform our friends, family, and co-workers about the importance of becoming a donor and to make sure they sign a donor card. Also, they need to discuss this very important decision with their family. We all need to bring awareness to the public about the importance of giving the gift of life so I can continue on with my life, dialysis free, and have guys waiting patiently by the phone for me. Honey, we never go anywhere. What are you talking about? We just came back from the grocery store. I thought we had a great time squeezing the tomatoes and produce. I know someplace more exciting than squeezing tomatoes. The breakfast cereal aisle? The city of brotherly love. Oh, honey, I don't even like your brother. Philadelphia. Renal Support Network is holding their big national patient meeting. With you being on dialysis, I figure this would be a great place for us to mingle with other patients and healthcare professionals that are experiencing the same kind of challenges we do. There's going to be panelists from all over the country, hundreds of patients, fun, and even games. An illness is too demanding when you don't have hope. Tell me about it. It's this October 5th through the 7th in Philadelphia. They even will have dialysis services available for you for the trip. I think this is just perfect to help you empower yourself about decisions on your own care and treatments. What do you say? Well, let's see. A fun convention in a fun city with other people and healthcare professionals exchanging knowledge and ideas and giving us hope in living with my kidney disease with interesting speakers, activities, and even games. Or a trip to the half-price dented can section at the Food King. Hmm. For more information, call Renal Support Network at 818-543-0896 or go to their website at rsnhope.org. Ew, I conferred with a furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals and talk with the animals, grunt, squeak and squawk with the animals, and love, they could talk to me. And we're back with Deb Hurdle and Rocky. I love Rocky. Rocky's licking my leg as we speak. <laughs> you know, he that's likes great. you. And he, he does this kind of paddle thing. What does that mean? When he he's stands doing up and he's waving, he wants you to come over so he can give you some love. 
He's oh, waving. Yes, he's waving. Oh my God. The, like if he's at a stadium, he does the wave. Like yes, everybody. The wave. Yes. How perfect. That's what we call it the wave. Uh-huh. The wave. He does the wave. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. He's so <laughs> soft, too. He's very, very clean. He just had his bath so he can do pet therapy rounds at the hospital this so afternoon. He's, he's actually cleaner he's than a, I am because I got Saturday yet. You forgot for to me. shower today. No. Right. It's so funny. The dog has to do rounds. Yes. <laughs> That's so great. Hey, the dog's working. When he walks in the hospital, he's excited when he gets there. Yes. Uh, he loves greeting everybody in the hallways. We go up to the patient rooms. We start the rounds, and he gets quiet. And when I put him on a patient's bed, he's very calm. Although sometimes when the patient's feeling a little better than another patient, we, we do some tricks on the bed. But he knows he's working. So therapy pets are generally limited to an hour at a time on any given day, and we try to limit it to one or two times a week because they know they're working, and it is uh, it does tire them. But it's something they always look forward to, and they miss it. It's part of their routine when they don't go there. Yeah, you know? I think dogs right. love to work. I mean, they I know do. certain breeds like to work more than others. Oh, like, yes. You know, Bass mm-hmm. and Hounds are not... Great for working, but, uh, <laughs> well, but uh, I, had, you know. I had a border collie who loved to hurt. Oh, well, there oh yes. my God. You know, you get a, a group of people. A job, you me. get a group of people in the backyard. And I didn't know this. I had rescued this dog. Canyon was his name. And I had a group of people over in my backyard. And all of a sudden, he's like circling the whole yard. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they're like, they're like it was funny. Somebody said, did something just nip me? And he was nipping their heels to get them all in the center. And I never knew this about the border collie. Can you that dog in the hospital? You know, nipping the uh, patients no, to that get wouldn't be good. to hurt no. the patients. But in. he didn't know. He would just go nudge them up on the the uh-huh. ankles to like right. you know. Uh, now, when Rocky, gather them together yes. like a flock of sheep, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when Rocky is taken to the hospital to do, to work, does he wear like a, a little vest like they used he to? He has a little vest, but we don't often wear it because he has a badge that goes on his collar. And frankly, with a small dog, there's not much to pet when you have the little coat on him, you know. Oh, so. that's and his true. fur is so soft. I mean, who would want to cover that's that fur? That's part of it. The tactile sensation, you know, the the patient being able to get their hands in the fur, they go, oh, it feels so wonderful. It's, you know, that's part of it. It's the connection you get when you touch, when you stroke, when you feel that fur. And it's a living thing there, you know? It'd be so cool to have a little stethoscope around his neck, oh, though, yeah. and a little doctor's badge. <laughs> that's a very good idea. Maybe he'll be a doctor for Halloween. We do dress our dogs up on the different um, holidays, and Halloween's a big one for our therapy pets. Oh, and so, <laughs> so, so what, what has Rocky up? been? He's been Batman. He's been a little farmer with, um, you know, the little straw hat and a hayseed sticking and out of his pocket. And then you take him to the and, units and Stuff yes. And, uh-huh. and oh, the, the patients, the staff, they just roar because it's it's so funny seeing all these dogs coming down dressed. And we have a little terrier that's dressed with a tutu and, you know. I once saw a pug dressed as a pirate. Oh. And it, it's such a great <laughs> face for a pirate, you and know. And snuffling, you know, like. Yeah, yeah it was it was Did great. It, go, Arr. it was great. <laughs> now, what, what's like, tell us one of the stories that you've seen and, you know, uh, you know, being a chronically ill person patient you know i don't mm-hmm. feel feel ill mm-hmm. but you know i i know i have this chronic disease of, mm-hmm. of uh, kidney problems and and what's the what's one of the stories that you know you have that when you saw a, a, an actual change in a, a person that you remember some kind of uh, there's kind of a hospital there's a wonderful young man he was 23 years old he came down with valley fever what is valley fever now? Valley fever is um, an infectious disease that affect it, it affects the um, nervous system, I believe, and uh, you get very, very ill. He went into a coma, wow. and you can die from it. He was in a coma for like three months, and he was in the hospital. We visited him every week. His family requested us specially to come in every time we were there, and we would put the dogs on the bed, and they would snuffle his hands and... Um, and lick his fingers. And he didn't remember that when he was deeply in a coma, but as he started to wake up, because a coma patient does wake up in stages uh, often, he had a sense, he said later, about these dogs being with him. And it was a wonderful day when he actually woke up, and he was there. Uh, we were there when he woke up, the day he woke up. Wow. And um, we came and put the dogs on. We said, do you remember any of this? He said, when I was waking up, I remember sensation at my hands and he said there was something really neat and he said I felt good 
And that just does more right. for you than anything else. The psychological paycheck of that is enormous. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's worth the bathing every every time you go into the hospital, the, the grooming, the, you know, uh, well, training. Well, h- how long does it take to have your pet become a therapist? I mean, what kind of trainings involved? There are a number of therapy pet organizations. You can Google them on the Internet. Um, Most of them have very similar uh, requirements. Your dog needs to have a good temperament, number one. Mm -hmm. has to be over a year old. um, And they go through a basic obedience course. They have to be evaluated by an AKC judge to uh, be tested for Canine Good Citizen Certificate. And then they have to be evaluated by the organization, the therapy pet organizations, the evaluator, and do a short internship, uh, about 10 hours, I think. And then they can basically go anywhere that um, the f- a facility will let them go. It's not like um, a, a federally uh, mandated uh, ADA So you can't dog. take one to a restaurant like a seeing eye dog? No, no. A therapy pet is a feel-good dog. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And though it works at what it does, and it works to make you feel good, it's not considered a working dog. So you can go in any place that will give you permission, but you must ask permission. You can't, by law, just go in anywhere. Uh, Lori says something about the emotional paycheck. That's a good question. Do do you Are you strictly volunteer? Do, do you get paid, or how does this work? No, the paycheck is the satisfaction. That's the reward. It, this is a volunteer position. <laughs> so it's it's all just volunteer work, and it just yes, because I know I, I I used to volunteer at the uh, dog pound in Agoura Hills, oh, California, uh-huh. and uh, it just I people say why do you do that, and I and they say oh does, they say doesn't it bother you? Don't you want to take home all the dogs? Yeah, you do want to take home mm-hmm. all the dogs, but mm-hmm. it it was such a huge emotional paycheck for mm-hmm. me that yes. uh, I I did love it. Yes, you know a lot of people are more attached to animals than people, and when you get into uh, a crisis in your life and you're surrounded by tubes and, you know, machines and everything. Sometimes a dog is the only thing or an animal is the only thing that can reach you. Well, I had a black poodle for 18 years from age 10 to 28, and he spent all my years on dialysis with me, all 12 years. And I can still feel him and I can smell him. I mean, it just, Mm -hmm. just, he was my life at times. What a wonderful memory. And, oh, I love that dog. And I now have a black poodle named Max that looks a lot like Peppy. And it's so hard because I feel like I'm recreating my childhood again with my new dog. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But Peppy was just incredible. And I know that he would, when I didn't feel well, he would, you know, I'd have to get up and walk him. Yes. And which was so good for me because they I pull it you made forward, me don't yes they? um mm-hmm. he made me get up because I didn't want to take care of myself but I had to take mm-hmm. care of him right and and then he would get up on the bed and that little face and mm-hmm. you know he just knew my emotions and how I was feeling mm-hmm. and oh Peppy <laughs> <laughs> now you know Lori has a very interesting thing too I went over Lori's house and uh, that is when she does invite me because she doesn't invite me often. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I went over there, and I got a thrill. I, I love her dogs, and it, although one of her dogs doesn't like me, but um, I, I, she has a bird that does not stop talking, and it just, it just. I, I was so thrilled, and I was laughing hysterically at this bird, and that brought me a lot of joy too. So mm-hmm. it's not only dogs and no, cats. There are know. there are therapy birds around. I know of a couple. Um, there's um, a gal in Ventura that is the chapter head of Love on a Leash, and she has a therapy bird, and she's had it for years. It's a small parrot, and she takes it places. You know, it, it's parrots are not as cuddly as dogs, yeah. well, well, <laughs> but they certainly can be entertaining. <laughs> well, Johnny will give that tough love approach. Um, I'm on a trip for a while, and I come back, and I'll walk in the house, and I'll go, I'm not your boy. <laughs> That's the first thing you'll say to me. So. I've never seen a parrot talk as much as, as Lori's parrot, because we were in the other room talking, <laughs> uh, actually, about the radio show, and the bird doesn't like to be ignored. He knows mm-hmm. there's people in the other room, and he carried on an entire telephone conversation, <laughs> both people himself. He was doing Lori. You know, he was imitating Lori, and then he was also imitating the other person on the other line in the phone. Did you teach him all this? No, he picks up everything. I mean, what's so funny now is every night we have these little dogs, and he's like, Max, Chloe, 
go potty, go potty, <laughs> go potty. It's I the mean, smartest and bird it's, I've ever and, and he seen speaks in my very life. clearly. That's I mean, fabulous. Um, the the thing is, if I could get him to talk on cue, yes, I, I say, you know, mommy could retire. Yes, exactly. If, if you would talk on cue, but he just looks at me, and then yeah. he does this other great great trick, is that um. I'll hold him on my hand, and I'll say, what happens if we don't get a patient bill of rights? And he'll do a complete dead chicken. He'll just fall over and dangle like a dead chicken. And uh, he is definitely a character. And when Lori um, wants to keep him in line, she takes a chicken leg and she eats it in front of him. He loves chicken legs. <laughs> Did you know that? He's That's a one of his, yes, his favorite foods are pizza. Um, he loves bean burritos, and he loves buffalo wings. Goodness. Oh. He's a TGI Fridays type <laughs> of bird. And he loves oh grapes, too. He loves grapes, and he has certain things that he loves. And it's so funny because when you're eating dinner, and his cage is not too far from our kitchen table. You know, it's about six feet or so. He can see everything on our kitchen table of what we're eating. And he has a preference of what he wants. And in what order you got to give it to him. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to give him, you know, uh, waffles before eggs, it ain't going to happen. He loves eggs, by the way, just to let you know. Um, He loves fruit. He loves potatoes. So he can identify the foods on the table. But so he's not really a kidney patient. If he's eating potatoes (laughs) and bananas and all that kind of stuff, he's not a kidney patient. Now, we've heard, we, we want, before we go, I'd like to hear from Rocky. Rocky? Rocky, uh, do you like working with the patients in the hospital? (laughs) Ah, there he goes. Yay, Rocky. And he knows his name. Every time I say his name, he looks at me and he wants to know what I'm doing. Do you have anything to say to the people listening? Do you have anything to say? Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Deb, and thanks, Rocky, for stopping by. And now, if anybody wants inf- more information about pet therapy or how to contact uh, you know, to get a pet to come, mm-hmm. uh, is there a number or a website or something? Yes, they can Google therapy pet organizations on the Internet and find a number of them and choose from them. Or they can contact me at Los Robles Hospital and Medical Center. And what's the number there? 805-497-2727. And ask for the dog lady. Yep, ask yes. for the dog lady. <laughs> Ew, I conferred with our furry friends. Man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals and talk with the animals, grunt, squeak, and squawk with the animals. And love, they could talk to me. Welcome back. Boy, that was so interesting. I'm going to go out and get more pets. I want no, to feel it better. Is. I know. It is. Isn't it? I mean, um, we got so much wonderful information today. And we got some great topics coming up on our next shows. And yes. it's, it's so exciting. I'm having so much fun doing this show talking about. It is fun. You know, people on dialysis, people on PD, people with kidney transplants. And, and it's just great. Family members. And also, you know, on our website, you can actually uh, email us. There's a section on our website to you know, tell us a topic that you want to hear about in the future. Yeah, or I if would you love have an idea hear. of a guest. Yes, I, you, we'll, we'll bring you on as a guest. And as a matter exactly. of fact, we have a live studio audience and it's growing bigger and exactly. bigger and bigger. So uh, we'll see you next time, right? Yes. Stay healthy. Renal Support Network would like to thank everyone who has made this show possible. Kidney Talk's founding sponsor is Amgen. Generous support is provided by Roche Pharmaceuticals and Astellas. Friends of Kidney Talk are Abbott Laboratories, American Region, and Fresenius Medical Care North America. Thank you for helping us stream health, happiness, and hope to the kidney community. Visit rsnhope.org for more information. We can control our own destiny. We can take charge of our health and ask questions about our medical options. We can form partnerships with our health care team. We can take steps towards self-improvement. We can be sensitive to the impact of our disease on our family. We can sing, dance, laugh, and enjoy our lives. We can appreciate today and look forward to tomorrow. We can help and support our fellow patients. We can pursue our hopes and dreams. We can make a difference.